You are getting ready to listen to the voice of Dr. Radi Ferguson. 2004 Olympian. Four-time national judo champion. Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. Author, speaker and coach. Hello, this is Dr. Ferguson, and welcome to today's Coffee with Rod D. And I would like to explain to you something that was absolutely remarkable for me in my learning and developmental process as a as a coach and an athlete. In the year of 1999, I made a huge error. I made a huge error, and I made one of the best decisions in my life. The huge error that I made was that I kept telling myself that I wanted to go to the Olympics that I wanted to go to the Olympics, that I wanted to go to the Olympics. I I was doing my affirmation statement. I was saying this thing over and over again. This thing was, I mean, it was it was rooted and embedded in my spirit. I mean, I, I prayed about it. I spoke to God about it. I spoke to the universe about it. I really planted a seed of going to the Olympics. And in 2000, that is exactly what happened. I went to the Olympic Games in Sydney, Australia, and I watched. I was there and I practiced. I went as an alternate. I went to the Olympics as an alternate, as a training partner, and I paid my own money out of my own pocket to go to the Olympic Games. That was a that was one of the biggest mistakes I made about not being exact about what it was that I wanted, but I didn't know. And one of the best decisions that I made was to invest in myself, my development, and actually go to the Olympics. When I went to the Olympics, I knew after leaving exactly what I should ask for. I knew that I should not ask to go to the Olympics, but I should ask to be on the Olympic team, to make an Olympic team, to qualify for the Olympics. And after 2004, I found out that I didn't think big enough I should have I should have been asking to be an, an Olympic medalist, but you learn in stages, you learn through development. And one of the best decisions that I made was to invest so that I knew exactly what to ask for. I guess I was like a, a ninth grader in algebra class who had the wherewithal to do better or has the wherewithal to do better in math if only I knew the applicability of algebra. Once somebody explained to me exactly what the Olympics was, what it looked like, how grandiose it was, I was able to create a, a point in my mind or a direction of where I wanted to go. I had like a compass, if you will. Before that, some people say, oh, I'm training for the Olympics. And I said, Pfft. there's really no way to train for the Olympic Games without either one going or having someone around you or a group of people around you who have been before who can talk to you on more than one occasion about what it is like to go to the Olympics. I think one of the best things that happened with uh, a young lady that ended up going to the Youth Olympic Games, she was an Olympian, she went to the Youth Olympics in 2010. Her name is Cynthia Ramming out of the Bahamas. I had an opportunity to coach her when I was uh, the head coach of the Bahamas Judo program. I I think her father did an amazing job with making sure that he provided her with a group of Olympians around her, a group of exemplars around her in various er er in various um, areas. And on a even though even though I'm one of the smaller pieces of the grand scheme, uh, I am one of the cogs in the whole production. And he made sure to get an Olympian in place to coach his daughter. Why is that huge? Because the, I mean, the mindset, the attitude is just different. Um, sometimes professionally um, abrasive, sometimes energetic, sometimes attitudinally off the meter, um, but always, always centrally aligned and focused with the desired end goal and result, which is to get to the Olympics, to develop an Olympian and to disseminate and inculcate the Olympic 
values of Olympism to an individual to help get them where they need to be. It's very difficult to go to a place if you don't have a map. And what her father did was essentially put the pieces of a map together to get her to China. And fantastic job. And I will tell you, just like I would tell anybody else, that if you want to go to the Olympics, it requires an Olympic size investment. In 1999, um, at the end of 1999, I knew that I didn't make the Olympic team. I knew I didn't make it. I knew. That did not stop me from investing um, by going to Japan. That did not stop me investing. I stopped me from investing by going to Spain. I went to Spain and did the same training camp as the Olympic team. I went with the Olympic team, paid my own money, and did the training camp with them. I did the same training. Um, it didn't stop me from spending my own money to go to Australia and stay and be housed and eat. That year, I spent $10,000 on training and travel just for the Olympics, not for the, not for the national championship I won in 2000. I'm just talking about doing the Olympic preparation with the Olympic team and not to be an, an Olympian. I paid my own money because I needed to see what it was like. And if you're going to be like that or if that's what you're striving for, then you need to get in line with those people and you need to pay your own way so that you can taste what that tastes like. So, yes, I paid my own money and I paid my own way to be a training partner, to get beat up on, to watch the Olympic Games, to sit in the chair and watch in a way roll through the rounds of the 2000 Olympics to fight Nicholas Gill in the final. I sat there and my seat was next to Yamashita for the finals. Yes, I paid my own way. I I provided an Olympic size seed so that I can eat Olympic sized fruit. And I try to tell people all the time that to sit down and have a discussion about something that's too expensive is silly. What you need to say is it's just not for you because if you want to live in a bigger house, it requires a bigger down payment. 20% of that is more than 20% of living in a smaller place. Okay? If you want to go to the Olympic Games, it requires a certain type of investment. If you want to be a national champion, it requires a different investment if you, than if you want to be a world champion. So if you don't want to be the greater thing or the better thing, then you don't, then you don't have to make a greater investment or a better investment. But you can't be the greater thing without the greater investment, without the investment of time, without investment of money, without investment in training, without the investment of sometimes hospital stays, without the investment of a, of a personal trainer. Of a, if you're not going to make those investments and you're going to try to skirt around the issue of investing and not seeding, and you, hey man, it's up to you. Do your thing. But don't, don't complain about you're not getting what you need and don't say, I don't think it takes all of that because some of you just don't know. But if somebody who has been to the thing that you're going to or has reached a high level in multiple areas and they're telling you this is the thing, well, then that's the thing. That's it. It's like um, somebody was telling me, it's like, man, you know, college is not for everybody. Agreed, man. I agree. College is not for everybody. Agreed. What you want to make sure that you do is you want to sit down and speak to the people who you've set up as exemplars in your life and see the ones who've gone to college and those who have not and hear what they have to say about school and then make your own decision. But please, don't tell me about Kanye West. Because Kanye West is an exemplar in poetry. That's it. He's a great poet. Other than that, I'm not, I'm not listening to what Kanye West has to say. So don't talk about Kanye West. Kanye West didn't go to school. Kanye West, ah. Fine. 
Find me the, some exemplars in your life and then ask them exactly what it is that they did to get where they, where they are. And then make your own decision based upon your level of respect for their advice. Case in point, man, I have this product called um, Underground Grit Fighting Secrets. Some of you watching my Coffee with Roddy videos may know about judo. Some of you may not. But the, the product has a hefty investment to it. Now, the amount of information in it, like right now, I think it's like a, there's, over, there's over 600 and something minutes of information and there's more to be added. And the investment is a hefty investment. And I hear people complain about the investment. And I'm thinking to myself, man, I spent about twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a year on judo. I used to travel. When I was living in Attleboro, Massachusetts, working with Texas Instruments, I used to travel to Boston in order to work out with Jimmy Pedro. And they had this big dig project going on at that time. I don't know if they're still doing it, but the traffic was horrendous. So going out, um, it was about an hour and a half. And then coming back, sometimes the traffic was so jammed up at at 11 o'clock or 10.30 at night that I had to, my car would be stopped on the highway and I would sleep. But sometimes the traffic was so bad, I'd pull over and I'd sleep and I'd get home at like 1, 2 o'clock. And then I'd wake up in the morning at 5.30 to get to the gym um, at the at the plant where I worked, worked in Massachusetts. And then I would run in the middle of the day in the morning during my lunch break. And then I would leave in the evening to go back to Boston to go to practice. And this was in between all the rest of the <laughs> things that I was doing in terms of traveling. And I quit my job and moved to the Olympic Training Center and then blew through all my savings. And then people are telling me, oh, you know, X amount of money is too expensive. And I really want to tell them, hey man, you go to hell. <laughs> really, I mean, because the amount, of, the amount of time and money that I invested in Judo or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and teaching and learning and education and coaching and symposiums and uh, learning how to disseminate and inculcate information and learning how to teach and learning how to take something that is intangible and package it as a deliverable. Whew. Oh my gosh. And then when somebody said, that's too much. That's like somebody saying, oh man, I'm, I'm not going to go to the Olympic Games and watch. It's just too much. I'm telling you right now, if you want to be an Olympian, you need to save your money and you need to go to Rio. I don't care if you fly to Rio for a day and walk around and never buy a ticket to an event, but walk around, hang outside of the stadium, listen, see all the people, see how grandiose the production is, sit down in a cafe somewhere in a bar and watch an event on TV, be in the city. If you can get a ticket to, a, to an event, then get a ticket to an event from a, from a scalper or somebody and go. I don't care what event it is. I don't, I don't care if you, I don't care what event it is, go. I don't care if you go watch sailing, go. And then when you come back, you understand. You understand why people pursue such a thing and they're so passionate about it. Because right now you can't understand. Hey, I went to the, um, I went to the Arnold Classic. Why did I go to the honor class? I went to the honor class and I had a ticket. And I watched. Why? Not because I'm a bodybuilder. I'm not a bodybuilder. But those are the exemplars in that particular area. Sport. If you call bodybuilding a sport, if you don't, that's not the discussion we're having. Listen, in that particular sport or that area of expertise, those are some of the best to do it. And you need to sit down and watch and hear the crowd and see the the look on their faces and look at their bodies and see how much the hours and time that was put behind that so that you can get inspired. So you can understand that that has an investment to it. And if, if you're not going to make an investment, like you'll never be a professional bodybuilder if you don't make the investment that they make. If you don't make the investment on the food, if you don't make it, for some people, it's just too expensive to do that. Got it. You don't have the wherewithal to make the investment. But there's a point where you just don't care how much it costs. I'm telling you right now, I sat down just like many of the people that I went to 
that I trained at the Olympic Training Center with. We would sit down and do our calendar at the beginning of the year. Where we're going? I'm going to the Czech Republic. I'm going to Budapest. And I'm going to do, after Budapest, I'm going to do the training camp in Hungary. Excuse me, the training camp in Tata. Uh, after Hungary, we're going to take the bus over and blah, blah, blah. And then I'm going to send my money in for X, Y, Z amount of money because that's how many euros it costs to stay. And then after that, where you go? Well, after that, I think I'm going to come back for about two weeks, train, and then I'm going to go out to Italy. And I'm going to go to the tournament in Italy, uh, the Guido Sandy tournament. And then I'm going to come... Listen, we start planning out our year with no money and made it to all the tournaments. How do you do that? Sometimes you got you got Visa, MasterCard, American Express, and you get on the phone, you start calling people, you start working, you start you make you make it happen in order to go. I never I never watched anybody at the Olympic trainer sit and sit down and say I can't go on a trip because I don't have money. Man, these are some of the brokest people that I knew who traveled all around the world. Yes, you can travel around the world broke. I've done it before. I've slept on the floor outside and I've slept on the floor in a train station. I've slept on my luggage before. Yes. I've been, I've been in countries where I've been broke. We're talking about a guy who was, when I attended Capella University, I was attending an online school with no laptop. Every time I went somewhere, I had to, I had to hand write my, my stuff on the plane. I read the book, hand, hand wrote all my stuff on the, on the plane, all my notes, everything, all my answers to all my questions, printed everything out so that I have it on the plane. As soon as I hit land, put my bags where they need to go, and then when everybody went to rest and get all that stuff done, I had to walk somewhere by myself and find an internet cafe in order to spend my little piece of corn or one euro, two euros for about five, ten minutes, type out all my answers, hit send, look at what somebody else posted, print that stuff out, go back to my room, get ready for practice, go to practice, shower, write out my responses by hand, walk back to the internet cafe. Listen, I... Ain't trying to hear nothing about you. You, you, you don't, you, you don't want to make no investment. The bottom line is you just don't want to get it done. And that's okay. But don't, don't tell somebody that something is too expensive and don't think that you know it already because you don't know it. Whatever you want to do, make the investment to do it. If you don't want to make the investment to do it, then don't hate on somebody else who has it. It's cool. Like, there's no guarantees in life, but I can't guarantee you one thing. If you don't plant the seed, there won't be any fruit. You could pull manure on the ground. You could, you could kick scrap. You can shovel. You can bang the shovel on the ground. You could put your foot on it and pull it. I mean, you could do whatever you want to do. Listen. You can do a rain dance, pray for rain. You can pull water on. You listen. You can urinate on. You can do whatever you want. But if you don't put the seed in there, buddy, nothing's happening. And just because you have the seed does not guarantee fruit. But without the seed, I can guarantee you, no fruit is possible. And that's it. In 1999, one of the worst things that I did. One of the worst decisions that I made was I didn't ask for exactly what I wanted. One of the best decisions that I made was I invested for what I did. Please visit www.coffeewithrodd.com. That's coffeewithrodd.com.